Hello, math students. Today we're going to be going over um, representing data. We're going to be going over the tutorial, the uh, practice, as well as the mastery test. I think this lesson's fairly straightforward, so you may not need this video. You may want to try to do it on your own, but if you need help, just follow along, do everything I do, and uh, I guarantee you it'll make a lot more sense. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully you know how to go, uh, go ahead and do this first one here. Plot these ordered pairs. So hopefully you know how to plot ordered pairs by now, but two comma three. So the first number tells you the X coordinate and the second number tells you the Y coordinate. So two comma three would be right here. Three comma four, six comma five, and then nine comma eight. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that these points don't form a straight line but they form sort of like a straight line, right? They, they're having an upward trend. So this will be an important concept throughout this uh, lesson is seeing what the trend of the data is. So seeing where, uh, see this example here on page six, you can see there's points that don't form a straight line, but you can create a line that more or less mimics the uh, data points. So. This is an important aspect in, as far as statistics, but basically if it has an upward trend, or in other words, the slope of that line is an upward trend, right? Going up from left to right, it has a positive slope. So we also call that a positive correlation. So if the line of best fit has an upward trajectory, so going up as you go from left to right, then we would say that that has a positive slope for the line, and a positive correlation for those uh, for that data. So let's go ahead and take a look. There are six parks. I'm looking at page ten on the tutorial. There are six park in parks in Chelsea's hometown. The number of playgrounds and picnic areas in each park is given by the table. So Park A has eight playgrounds and five picnic areas, and then so on. You can see the rest of the data here. So let's go ahead and plot the points according to what we see here. So. The x-axis is the number of playgrounds and the y-axis is the number of picnic areas. So let's go ahead and plot our points. So eight comma five is our first one. Eight comma five, just right there. And just go ahead and plot the rest of these points. Six comma four. Three, one. Two, four. Six, three and seven, five. Six, three, and seven, five. So you could see that these uh, data are going kind of upward as you go from left to right. So this would be a positive correlation. Now, one thing to also keep in mind is if it's going up from left to right, that's a positive correlation. However, if it's going down as you go from left to right, uh, that's a negative correlation. So that would be like, as one variable increases, the other variable decreases. So that would be a negative correlation. And then you may see data like this, where there doesn't seem to be any pattern at all. We call this no correlation. So there's no correlation in this example between good deeds and gifts. Okay, it's kind of sad. Um, so like this one, for example, would be a negative correlation because it's going downward as you go from left to right. So Maria's age increased the time it took her to run a mile. Um, so as her age increased, the amount of time it takes her to run a mile decreased, right? So you could see when she was uh, 11 years old, it took her eight minutes to run a mile. And you could see as she aged, it took her less and less time to run the mile. She got pretty fast by the time she's 17, right? Less than six minutes to run a mile, it's pretty fast. So the scatter plot indicates a negative correlation between the data. As one variable increased, her age, the other variable decreased the amount of time it took her to run a mile, right? So that would be a negative correlation. <clears throat> so you could see examples of lines of best fit. Uh, for this first uh, graph here, this is a very good line of best fit. Notice it doesn't hit any of the data points, but the line is basically the average of the data points. So the line, even though it doesn't touch any of the data points, it's a good predictor of where the data points will end up. Whereas line B, this is not a good line of best fit. Even though it touches some of the points, 
that's not necessarily what you're going for. You're going for an average of the points or an average of the data points. So line B is not a good line of best fit. Line A is a good line of best fit. So line A is uh, well-placed. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to uh, page 16 here. Nicholas collected data for the taxi uh, fare charge by 10 drivers based on the miles traveled. The scatter plot represents the data collected, draw a line of best fit for the plot. So basically we just wanna draw a line that is a good, basically kind of goes, not necessarily through specific points, but is a good average through. So we can go to our line tool and maybe something like that. It may go through some of the points, maybe not, but it's not a big deal, okay? So here's the correct, and it's pretty much exactly what we drew, we drew here. So we wanna just draw a line that best goes through the average data, okay? Now, just like with any line, we can graph it or we can say it's equation, right? Remember y equals mx plus b, the slope intercept form of a line. So lines of best fit, you could also write them in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Where hopefully you remember, the m is the slope and the b is the y-intercept. So what would, what would be the y-intercept or what would be the b in this, for this line? Well, if we look at the y-axis, where does our line of best fit cross the y-axis? You can see it's right here at six. So in this case, our b is six, okay? So we know it's gonna be y equals something x plus six. Now in this example, would this be a positive correlation or a negative correlation? Well, hopefully you can see this would be a positive sloped line. It's going up as you go from left to right. So therefore, it would be a positive correlation. Now, let's go ahead and find the slope. Now, what I don't want you to do, I don't want you to try to find the slope between two like of these data points. Like, don't find the slope between these two points because those two points are not on the line, right? So those two points don't really tell us the slope of our line of best fit. Now, if the points are on the line, you can use them. But in this case, none of these data points are actually on the line. So we're not going to use any of those data points. What we can do is we have a sure-fired point right here at uh, 0, 6. And then I can kind of see on the grid lines, you want to pick another point that's more or less on the grid lines. I'm actually going to use, a, I'm actually going to use red here. So let's see. I'm gonna use this point here. And then if you see on the grid lines, there's another point here. So you basically wanna use the grid lines to help you find a next coordinate point for helping you calculate the slope. Now, if you remember the slope or the M is the rise over run. So rise divided by run. In this case, you rise one and you run four. So the slope is rise over run. So that's one over four. So the equation of this line of best fit is y equals one-fourth x plus six. There you go. Okay. Let's move along. Okay, let's go ahead and meet on page 19 here. We're at the activity. Um, unanswered, unanswered. Okay. So let's go ahead and look. Stephen wants to come up with an equation to show the, how, show the relationship between the height and the weight of dogs. He collects data on 20 dogs and plots the scatter plot shown here. In this activity, you will use the scatter plot to find the equation that models the relationship between the highest, between the height and weight of dogs. So unsurprisingly, uh, height and weight are positively correlated, right? The heavier a dog, well, the more it's Going, uh, the more it's height, right? The more or the taller it is, the more it's going to weigh, right? There's a positive correlation there. So which of these lines would be the line of best fit? L, M, or N? So which one goes through the data best, basically? Well, hopefully you can see that this would be line L. So I want you to say that this would be line L is the line of best fit. 
comma because why why is that why is that the why is why is that the case? Well, it's the line that goes through the average of the points. All right, so I want you to basically explain that there. For the line of best fit, the y-intercept is approximately. So looking at line L, what's the y-intercept? It looks like at 10. Okay. And the slope is approximately. Well, we know it's going to be a positive slope because it's positively correlated. And what I'm going to do, like before, I'm going to go ahead and grab this, grab this here. I'm going to go ahead and try to look at two points that are on grid line. So I'm going to use this point here. So 0 comma 10. And I can kind of see maybe this next point here, this is on the grid lines for line L. Well, notice this is 10, this is 20, right? Notice it's counting by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? And then over here, we're counting by fives, five, 10, and so on. So what's our slope? What's our rise? Well, our rise is 10 actually, right? If I'm going from here to here, the rise is 10, because I went from 10 to 20. So when we're calculating our slope, we want to do the rise over the run. And how much is the run? Well, that's five in this case. So in this case, our slope is two. So be careful. Don't put a slope of one in this case. You want to be sure to look at the scale of both the x and y axis to make sure you're calculating the rise and run correctly. So in this case, we have a slope of two. And again, it'll be positive two because it's a positive correlation. So now we can write the equation. We know our m, our slope. What's our slope? Well, it was 2. And our y-intercept, our b, is 10. And you're done. OK, let's go ahead and move along once you got that. So one key important concept that you need to understand is the difference between correlation and causation. So two variables could be correlated, but that doesn't mean that they cause each other. Um, now, some things are correlated and they cause each other, and some things are correlated, but they don't cause each other. So let's look at some examples here. All right, determine whether each group represents a correlation with causation or correlation without causation or neither. You have to think critically about the two variables in the graph to determine whether one is caused by the other. Okay, so let me give you, this is kind of a famous example, but uh, there's a correlation between the amount of fire damage uh, that a fire causes and the number of firefighters at the fire. Now, does that mean that the firefighters cause the damage? Well, no. There's a third variable that causes both of those things, right? So the size of the fire. So if a fire is large, not only does it cause more damage, but it also causes more firefighters to come. So the firefighters aren't causing the damage, but there's a clear positive correlation between those two things. So that, that's one thing we have to think about critically is just because there's a correlation doesn't mean one of the things is caused by the other. So let's look at these examples here. One of these will be correlation without causation. One will be neither correlation nor causation. And then the other one will be correlation with causation. So let's see, this first one talks about ice cream sales and temperature. So does temperature cause more ice cream sales? Well, I would think that that's causation, right? There's clearly a correlation. Let's go ahead and say that that is cause causation. In other words, the temperature causes more ice cream sales. Let's. Uh, Look at this one, hours spent reading and weight. So does the time you spend reading cause you to lose more weight? That's what it's showing here. Well, that doesn't seem like there should be causation there, right? It doesn't make sense that reading would cause you to lose weight. So we're gonna say there's a correlation. Clearly there's a pattern, a correlation here, a negative correlation, but that doesn't mean that this is caused, these two variables cause one another or anything like that. This one, the number of siblings you have and how tall are you? Okay, so this clearly there's no pattern or discernible pattern, no correlation here. So we're going to go ahead and say that there's no correlation and we'll put neither there. Okay. And we got it right. Great. Um, okay, so 
now that you understand that, hopefully, let's go ahead and move on to the practice. Now you're gonna have um, you're gonna have five questions for this practice, but I have ten questions here. You're gonna be offered five of these ten questions, so uh, just follow along if you want to, and and uh, if you follow along and do all the questions with me, you'll gain a fuller understanding. Um, so and just write down the things I write, do the things I do. So for this first one, uh, a child's shoe size, let's see, a children's shoes designer conducts research on how a child's age affects his or her shoe size. Based on the graph of the data collected, the designer found that there, there to be a relationship between a child's age and his or her shoe size, which of the following is a valid statement for the situation. So in this case, we would say that the age of a child is a cause of a shoe size, which makes sense. It's one of the causes. Um, which makes sense because as someone ages, then that causes their feet to grow as well. Um, a local new newspaper assigns ratings between 1 and 10 to every book and movie it reviews. Victor gathered data about five titles where the newspaper reviewed both the book and the movie version of the title. The ratings assigned by the newspaper are given in the table. Select the points that represent the data. So here you're just clicking clicking the points that are shown here. So seven comma four, seven comma four, and you'd click that point. Six comma five, nine comma eight, and just click the rest of these points here. Five, three, six, eight. Five, three, and six, eight. Okay, simple. Determine which of the situations shows correlation with causation, which one shows correlation without causation, and which one shows no correlation. Okay, well, I would say graph one, clearly no pattern. So this is the no correlation. So graph one would be the no correlation. So I'll put that here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the variables here. So for graph two, it says miles per gallon and car price. So is car price, uh, does car price cause less miles per gallon? Mm, I don't think that that's causation, right? Maybe not. But let's look at this one. This one's definitely causation, right? The amount of grams of sugar and the total carbs, right? It makes sense that if an item has more sugar, it's going to have more carbs, right? And that's caused, right? Um, the sugar causes there to be more carbs. So for graph three, I would definitely say correlation with causation. And then graph two, we'll say is the correlation without causation. Okay, Haley created a scatter plot and drew a line of best fit as shown. So we see here, we got the scatter plot. It's a negative correlation in this case. So we know we're not gonna have a negative slope. And we want to find the slope intercept form of the line. So y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Now, in this case, where's the y-intercept? Well, it's right here at 15. So we know our b is 15. And what's our slope in this case? Well, here I can go from this point to I can go down 1 over five, right? Down one over five. So since I'm going downwards, as you go from left to right, it'll be a negative correlation and also a negative slope. So it's down one. So negative one is my rise and then over five. So negative one fifth. So y equals negative one fifth x plus 15. Lionel created a scatter plot, line of best fit. So it's the same, uh, same type of problem here. We could see our y-intercept is 16. So we're gonna write it into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Our b in this case is 16, simple enough. Now let's go ahead and see if we can find the slope. Well, we know it's a negative correlation, so we know our slope's gonna be negative something. Um, let's see, we can go from this point and maybe to this point here. So that's down two over one. So down two over one. So that would be our slope there. 
down to over one. You don't have to put the over one. So just negative two X is what we're gonna probably see. Negative two X plus 16. Carson drew lines of best fit for the two scatter plots as shown. Okay, so you can see for line A, this looks like a good line of best fit. It goes through like the average of the points. Uh, line B, even though it goes through some points, uh, this is not a good average, right? So line A is a well-placed well line of best fit. Line B is not. Which phrase best describes relationship indicated by a scatter plot? So would this be a positive correlation, a negative correlation, or no correlation at all? Well, hopefully you can see as the X variable increases, the Y variable decreases. So that would be a negative correlation. Here we have a line of best fit once again, and we wanna find the equation of the line of best fit. Well, we can see it's Y intercept, it's a B is four. So when we're writing in slope intercept form, Y equals MX plus B, the B in this case is four. Now what's the slope in this case? So we can see it's a positive slope because it's going upward. And as you go from left to right, it's going upward. And I can use maybe this point. Here in this case, I can use this point because it's on the line, right? So I can use it, it's on the line. So it goes up one over three. So up one over three. So our slope is one third. So y equals one third x plus four. Okay, let's see. Which of these lines would be the line of best fit? So I hope you know this one already, but the but line B in this case is the best uh, line here in this case. So line B. <clears throat> Tyler gathered data from 12 recent basketball games about the number of points he scored, the number of points his teammate Nolan scored, and the total number of points his team scored. He displayed the data in two scatter plots. So for the plot A, it's the points that Tyler scored versus the points that Nolan scored. You can see that points are all kind of, these data points are all kind of random. So in this case, there doesn't seem to be a correlation between uh, the two players uh, scoring. Whereas the number of points that Tyler scored versus the number of points the team scored, you can see there's a very good positive correlation here. And the more linear, the more like a line it looks, like the less scattered, the more like a line it looks, that means it's a stronger correlation. So this plot B, we would call a very strong positive correlation because it's basically linear, right? So did either scatter plot indicate a positive correlation? Yes, plot B. Very strong positive correlation. All right, now we're gonna move on to the mastery test. So if, um, you're ready for that. You're going to be offered five questions out of these 20. And by the way, if you follow along and, and do all these things with me, you'll understand it quite a bit better. Um, and if you found this useful and you would like to thank me, just like, comment, subscribe, or better yet, share it with someone else. Uh, it's just a small way you can thank me for all this hard work that I put into this channel. Okay. Which phrase best describes relationship indicated by a scatter plot? So this is a, looks like a negative correlation. And it's a very strong negative correlation because it's almost linear, right? So this is a, uh, so what kind of correlation is that? I already kind of told you. Okay, Frank, Frank created the scatter plot and drew the line of best fit as shown. By the way, I'm only gonna give you usually a hint for each of these problems. Some of the problems I might help you with completely, but mostly just a hint for a lot of these problems. Was the equation of the line of best fit? Well, in this case, it's going downwards and you're gonna to wanna to write into the slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. So what's the y-intercept in this case? Well, it's right here. And we know our slope's gonna be negative. You can count the slope going from this point to this point and figure out the equation. Samir created a scatter plot, line of best fit, yada, yada. Okay, so it's the same as the previous problem. We're writing this into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So what's the y-intercept in this case? 
And then the slope, you can go from this point perhaps to this point. And you can see it's a negative sloping line. So we know it's going to be a negative slope or and another a negative correlation for this set of data. Okay. Which of these lines would be the best line of best fit? Well, we want the line that goes through the average of the points, right? We don't necessarily need it to go through specific points. We want it to go through the average. So some points above, some points below. Here we have a scatter plot. We want to find the equation. So again, write this into slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. In this case, this, the data is going downwards. It has a negative correlation. So we know we're going to have a negative slope, and it's y-intercept. You can see it's y-intercept here, and you can calculate the slope maybe from this point to this point. <clears throat> Wayland created a scatter plot and drew the line of best fit as shown. So here we want to find the equation once again. And in this case, it's a positive correlation. So we know we're going to have a positive slope because it's going upwards. The data is going upwards as you go from left to right. So what's our B in this case? Well, our B is five. And you can calculate the slope from this point, perhaps to this point. So calculate the rise over run to calculate the slope. Kristen gathered data from her classmates about the age and contents of their backpacks. She displayed the data in two scatter plots. So we could see, um, does either scatter plot indicate a positive correlation? So which of these two shows a positive correlation? Remember, if the data just looks random, that is a no correlation. Whereas if the data is going upward as you go from left to right, that's a positive correlation. Pat created the scatter plot. Okay, here we're trying to find the equation. Once again, you're going to be writing into y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form. b is the y-intercept, so that's shown right here. And then m is the slope. You can calculate the slope going from this point, perhaps to this point on the grid lines. And it, we know it's going to be a negative slope because it's a negative correlation here. It's going down as you go from left to right. Martin is interested in the new hyper milling movement, which focuses on getting the best miles per gallon when driving. He gathered some data about the weights in thousands of pounds of different cars and the average miles per gallon. The graph below shows the result of Martin's research. Okay. Um, select true statement based on the graph. Okay. So in this case, you can see here, um, is there a correlation here? Well, yes, it seems there'd be a negative correlation here. Do you think that there's a causation? So does the car's weight cause, um, so more weight, does that cause less miles per gallon? Hmm. I would say that, yes, that is causation, right? I would say correlation with causation, right? Yes, having a, a heavier car causes less miles per gallon, right? Yeah. We have a scatter plot, finding the equation. We're going to write it into y equals mx plus b form, the slope intercept form. The b in this case is right here. That's your y intercept. And then the slope, we can go from this point, perhaps to this point. Here we can use this point on this data point because it's on the line of best fit and you would calculate the slope. Notice it's a negative slope in this case because it's a negative correlation because it's going downward as you go from left to right. Which phrase best describes the relationship indicated by a scatter plot? So is this data going downward as you go from left to right or is it going upward as you go from left to right? Or does it seem random? Okay, if it's going downward, then that's a negative correlation. If it's going upward, then it's a positive correlation. And for no pattern, you put no correlation. Mel created the scatter plot and drew the line of best fit. Here we go. We want to write the equation into slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. In this case, your y intercept is right here. That's at six, looks like. And you can calculate the slope by going rise over run. 
rise over run. Okay. If you're not sure how to do that, I showed you a couple in the practice, so you can rewind the video and watch that section. A basketball coach is gathering data from games where her team won the game after having a halftime lead and where her team lost the game after having a halftime deficit. She displayed the data in scatter plots. Okay. Um, does either scatter plot indicate positive correlation between the variables? Um, well, do so which ones, if any, show a positive correlation? In other words, going up as you go from left to right. Okay. Could be just plot A, just plot B, or both, or neither. So <clears throat> okay. A soccer club recorded the number of tickets the fans purchased on the club's website last year, along with the number of merchandise items purchased. The graph below shows the data the soccer club recorded. So we can see the data here. Um, if it's random data, if it looks like random data, you would say it's neither correlation nor causation. Um, if it's a positive, um, yeah, but if there shows like a, a pattern, then we would say it's correlation. There is a correlation in that case. Uh, Maggie drew the lines of best fit. So is this a good line of best fit? Is this a good line of best fit? Are they both good line, lines of best fit? Or are they both bad lines of best, best fit? Remember, the line of best fit has to go through the average of the data. So it should be some data points below the line of best fit and some data points above it. Here we have a scatter plot writing the equation, y equals mx plus b, that's slope intercept form. In this case, the y-intercept, the b, is right here. And you can calculate the slope by going from this point, perhaps to this point here. So what's the rise? What's the run? Let's calculate the slope. In this case, it's a positive slope because it's going upward as you go from left to right. In other words, a positive correlation. This one, we would say, uh, so each uh, phrase in the table describes two variables which are strongly correlated. Select all phrases that imply correlation without causation. So there may be a correlation, but one does not cause the other. Okay, so let's look at the first one, the number of stuffed animals produced at a factory and the number of newborn babies. So we would say this is correlation, uh, but not causation. Um, I actually kind of don't agree with this one. I think that they are kind of caused, right? Like the number of babies being born does cause the factory to produce more, uh, but they're saying it's not. So we'll just say it's not, okay? Um, the number of hits by a baseball team in a game and the number of runs they score, that's definitely uh, causation. Uh, so we're not gonna click that because Having more hits causes the team to score more. That makes sense. The number of people at a store and the number of coupons given out. This would also be correlation with causation because uh, the number of people at the store causes the, the store to give out more coupons. Let's see, the number of snow plows on the street and the amount of snowfall. This would also be causation because the more snowfall causes there to be more snow plows. That makes sense. The number of videos rented and the number of new films in theaters. Here there's a correlation, but not causation. Um, not really sure about this one either, but that's what they say. So we're going to click it. The number of pets in the neighborhood and the amount of grass fields nearby. This one is uh, correlation, but not causation. So we're going to click the first and then the last two there as our answer. A study revealed that most orchards that use a new fertilizer harvested peaches with multiple pits. However, orchards that did not use the new fertilizer did not harvest any peaches with multiple pits. The most reasonable conclusion that can be made from the study is that the new fertilizer is correlated and causes more pits. Match the pairs of variables with the type of relationship they show. Um, the number of high school seniors and the high school graduates, I would say that's correlation with causation, right? Having more seniors causes more graduates. 
the amount of snowfall and the number of voters, probably not correlated at all. The number of doctors and the number of nurses correlated without causation. Uh, yeah, the doctors don't cause there to be more nurses. Uh, there is probably a third variable that causes both to increase. Last question. Henry gathered data about the types of nuts in five handfuls of mixed nuts. The data he gathered is shown on the table. So in handful A, the number of peanuts, nine, the number of other nuts, seven. Select the points in the data. So you just want to select the points that he shows here. So the first point is nine comma seven. So nine comma seven. So you'd click that point and then you'd click the rest of these points there, point B, C, D, and E. Okay, so that's it for this one. I hope that made sense. Uh, should be fairly straightforward if you got everything and if you listened. Um, well, like I said, if you want to help me out, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.